<laughs> Hello, my dears, and welcome to another episode of Storytime with Senpai. Yes, boo boo. <laughs> when you see this wine glass full of juice, you know what's up. I'm going to be telling you guys some more crazy freaking life experiences. Good times. Cheers. Here on Storytime with Senpai, I share a lot of stories about my life from my childhood all the way up until my career as a published author here in America because life gets crazy, okay? As an author, I'm telling you. I shared a lot of stories with you guys so far, such as that time my aunt accidentally bought me animated... Almost died. Or that time my anime-hating art teacher challenged me to an art duel. You don't even know. You have to watch that video. Or that time my art got stolen and sold on eBay. Which brings us to today's story time. I asked you guys on Instagram to choose between two story time topics and today's topic won the poll. Since the last time I checked. The poll might be different now, but when I checked it, this one won. <sighs> okay, how do I even begin this story? Today's story time, I'm going to be talking about the first time I ever had my art stolen. I'm telling you right now, this story starts when I was seven years old and somehow concludes well into high school. I don't even know how to explain how weird this experience was for me. And as you can see from the title of the story, someone stole my art and things got weird. So without further interruptions, let's begin the story time. I think I need some jewels. If you guys have watched my video where I talk about my artist journey and how my style developed and all that good stuff, you know that I have been drawing my entire life. According to my family, I've been drawing since I was 18 months old. And in my artist journey video, I showed you guys a bunch of my artwork from when I was a little kid all the way into high school. So you might have an idea of what I drew like when I was seven years old. If not, here's some pictures. I've always been known as the class artist my entire life. I would paint the backdrops for our plays, whenever we had to make special greeting cards and stuff for our principal's birthday or whatever. From the entire school, they would ask me to actually like, draw things for the principal. It was, it was pretty cool, you know, to know that people really enjoyed your work and they appreciated it. The kids in the class would always ask me to draw for them. I'm sure all of you who are the class artists know that whenever a freaking project happens in class, all the kids come running to you asking you to draw the projects for them, right? Am I right? Tell me guys in the comments below. Has that happened to you? Like suddenly, nobody knows how to pick up a pencil. Suddenly, for some reason, you're the only one who knows how to color. They all come to you, right? <laughs> Same thing happened to me in elementary school. But I remember one particular project that I was really looking forward to. It was so freaking cool to me personally. And we had just read the story, The Tortoise and the Hare. If you guys do not know the story, The Tortoise and the Hare, let me explain it to you a little tiny bit so that you can understand the illustration that I created based off of the story, which is important to this story that I'm telling you right now. <laughs> In The Tortoise and the Hare, there's obviously a tortoise, which is a type of turtle looking little creature, and a hare, which is, in essence, is a rabbit. So. In the story, the tortoise and the hare are racing, and the tortoise is really, really slow. The hare is super confident and is like, girl, I'm going to win. I'm going to beat your ass in this freaking race. And the hare is racing and racing, going super fast. The tortoise is all like, slow and steady wins the race. And inevitably, the cockiness of the hare causes him to lose the race, and the tortoise, who went slow and steady, won the race. So we were asked to create an illustration based off of the story. And I was like, girl, I got this. I'm going to have it like, you know, like in the Olympics, where it's like the little podium, where it's like first place is the tallest, then second place, then third place is the lowest. I drew one of those. The little tortoise was standing on the top with his little like medallion, you know, hanging from his neck. And the hare was standing on like the second place, like little podium thingy thing and was looking all types of defeated. And then I drew a newscaster like interviewing the tortoise and a little speech bubble saying, how'd you do it? 
what, what was your technique? How to win the race? I had so much freaking fun with this illustration. And in case you want to have an idea of what it looked like, I recreated the artwork for you guys so you have an idea. I remember my entire class loved the illustration. My teacher thought it was so clever to like have a newscaster there and everything. And there was a boy next to me named, we we're gonna call him Lewis, who really, really, really loved the drawing. Like, really loved the drawing. And he could not stop staring at the drawing while I was working on it, while I was coloring it, while I was just existing with it. And once class was done, and we had to put all of our art supplies away, including the illustration, he reached over to my desk, pulled and slid the drawing over to his desk, and I'm just thinking, oh, he wants to take a little closer look at the illustration. He seemed like he was having a good time watching me create it. He just wants to look at it. And I'm just, you know, peacefully there, just allowing him to look at it. But then he begins to slide the drawing off of his desk, and puts it in his desk and looks at me and says, I'm going to keep this. I'm taking this from you. And I'm just like frozen. I'm like, what? What? You're taking my draw? I didn't really know what to do. I felt like, I don't, I don't know. I, I never had that happen to me before. <laughs> so he put it in his desk and then class started. And I didn't know how to like, ask the teacher for help. Something you should know about me is I'm also the class clown. As in, I was always getting yelled at and sent to the principal's office. Always. I love doing weird crap to make people laugh. And I didn't see it as being bad. I just saw it as having fun. So basically, as being the one that's always being sent to the principal's office, I felt like I couldn't ask the teacher for help. Like I didn't know how to be like, teacher, teacher, for once, take me seriously. I'm not disrupting your class this time. I I'm, I'm actually asking for help. Like, I didn't think the teacher would believe me. So the day came and went, and I went home really thinking, I really wanted my drawing. I got robbed. Like, so the next day when I came into school, I looked at Lewis. He looked at me, and I was like, that's it. This is my moment. Raised my hand, super high up to the sky. Teacher was like, yes, Elizabeth. And I was like, he stole my drawing of the tortoise and the hare. And he said he was going to take it. And my teacher was like, what, Louis? You, you took her drawing? And he's denying it. He's like, no, no, I didn't take it. Teacher went over to his desk, emptied out the whole desk, textbooks, everything. And it wasn't there, obviously, because it was the next day. He took it home. It was in his house. Stupid Lizbeth, think about that girl. And my teacher looked at me so defeated like, uh, uh, It's not here. Are you sure he took it? Louis, where's the drawing? And he kept denying it because obviously it wasn't in the desk anymore. Uh, I felt so defeated. I didn't know what to do. The teacher did believe me. She did believe me. And she did try to help. But there wasn't much else that we could do. And I just went on with life and knew that he had the drawing and was never going to give it back. And I legit got robbed. I never told my parents about it, never told my cousins about it, never told any of my friends about it. Which is why when this next thing happened in high school, I was stunned. This is when it starts getting weird to me, okay? So... In high school, I no longer went to the same school as a lot of my elementary school friends, but we still kept in touch, you know, birthdays, holidays, and all that good stuff, right? So one day, I'm in the car with my mom and my friend, who I'm going to call Michael, and uh, Michael, just, they're talking with me in the back seat, talking about school, just catching up on just life and everything, and then we pass by a house that belongs to Lewis, the person who stole my artwork when I was seven. And Michael looks over at the house and is like, oh, that's Lewis's house. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah? I know, I, I didn't know. And there's a moment of silence as Michael is thinking to himself. And then Michael says, you know, I don't think you knew, but Lewis knows how to draw. And I'm like, he does? I don't remember him ever drawing in school. Oh yeah, he loves to draw. 
But there's one drawing he's really, really proud of. It's a drawing he did when he was seven of the tortoise and the hare. And I looked at him and I was like, the tortoise and the hare? And Michael goes, oh yeah, he loves that drawing. He has an entire wall dedicated to the tortoise and the hare drawing that he did. There's a whole bunch of copies of it all over the wall. What? And I looked at him, I was like, wait, what? Wait, what do you mean? And Michael looked at me and said, yeah, an entire wall. And I asked him, so you knew how to draw that well when you were seven. Why don't you draw anymore? Lewis told him that was the only drawing he was able to do and was never able to draw again, which is why he loves the drawing so much. I want you to understand that when this is happening and Michael is telling me this, we're like 17 years old. That means for 10 years, he's been obsessed with the drawing that he stole from me and has an entire wall dedicated to the artwork that he stole from me, boo-boo. And I looked at Michael and I was like, dude, that's the drawing he stole from me. He stole that drawing from me in elementary school. And Michael went, I freaking knew it. I knew that art stole from anywhere. I knew that artwork was yours. That's why I brought it up. Because for years now, I've been looking at that and thinking, that's Lizbeth's art. I remember her art from elementary school. That's hers. Why does he have this? The thing is, I never told Michael about the artwork that was stolen from me. I didn't tell any of my friends. I didn't tell anybody. The thing is, he was able to describe the drawing. He described the newscaster. He described the medallions hanging from the tortoise and the hare's neck. He described that the tortoise was standing on a first place podium. He knew the entire illustration. Michael wasn't even in my class when that happened. I didn't tell him about the drawing. He never got to see it because it got stolen from me, boy. Okay, gotta calm down for a second. <laughs> I was shook. I was shook. I was shook it to the core. I, it was just so freaking weird to think that somebody 10 years later would still have that drawing and have an entire wall dedicated to it. And something else you should know is that my friend Michael, he's never been a liar or an exaggerator or anybody that's really able to make up a tall tale. Like he's a very salt of the earth, hardworking, honest person. He's never stolen or fought with anybody. He doesn't argue with anybody. He doesn't have enemies. Like he's just, a really nice guy. There's no reason why he would make that up, but again, how would he have known what the drawing looked like? It's the weirdest thing. And I wonder if <laughs> Lewis still has the drawing and if he's still freaking obsessed with it. I don't know. I think that's like the weirdest freaking thing. And oh my gosh, it's freaking so weird. And you know what? Not even the weirdest story I have under my sleeve. I still have so many tales to tell you guys. Oh my gosh. So what do you guys think of this story? Has anything like this ever happened to you? Has your art ever gotten stolen from right under your nose? Please let me know in the comments below guys. And please check out my other stories from my Storytime with Senpai series. The link to the playlist will be down there. In the description box below guys if you enjoyed this video please let me know with a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you will not miss more videos like this as well as tutorials on how to get published how to draw and make your own manga and comics as well as stories about my life like this so until next thursday guys please take care god bless and do not be afraid to nerd out but do be afraid of art these because People are crazy, okay? Take care, guys.